Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the chemical properties of alkali metals. Now in the last couple of films um, we've been looking at things called ionization energies and electronegativities and we've also been looking at where we find the alkali metals and the halogens in the periodic table. What we're going to try and do now is to use ionization energy and electronegativity to try and explain how the reactivity of alkali metals and halogens might vary as we go from one element to another in their groups. And what we'll also hopefully be able to do by the end of this film is write equations for these reactions. In other words, we'll know what forms when we put alkali metals in water and when we react alkali metals with halogens. OK, so let's start off by looking at alkali metals reacting with water. Um, I've started off here by writing a general equation. Now, you could quite happily, I suppose, try and memorize the equation for every alkali metal with water. Um, but I suspect you might be a little bit better off just learning this general equation because once you've done that, all you have to do is substitute the symbol for the alkali metal that you're interested in for the symbol here, M. Okay, so I've called uh, M is for a general metal, in particular an alkali metal that forms a one plus ion when it reacts with water. Okay, so in all of these reactions, our metal atoms are losing electrons, they're actually giving them to the hydrogen atoms in water. They're forming N plus ions, and we're forming hydrogen gas and a metal hydroxide. Okay, this metal hydroxide explains why these metals are called alkali metals because when a metal hydroxide, which is a base, dissolves in water, we make an alkaline solution. Now you'll know more about that kind of thing when you've studied the acids and bases topic. But what's also important to realize here is that hydrogen forms in all cases. Okay, so based on this general equation, we ought to be able to decide that if I put any alkali metal in water, very unusually for a metal, because most metals don't just react when you put them in water, these ones do. They produce bubbles of hydrogen and our solution, if we measured the pH of it with an indicator, for example, we ought to find that it becomes basic because this base is forming. So we form an alkaline solution because these metal hydroxides are bases. Okay, And you can see that it's the same mole ratio every single time. In other words, we balance them exactly the same way. And that shouldn't be surprising because the metal is always losing the same number of electrons. Okay, now if we think about um, how reactive these metals will be, in other words, if I put these metals in water, which one's going to react most violently with water? And some of them do. Some of them react extremely violently. Well, let's think about what's actually going on in the reaction, okay? If we're starting off with metal atoms and we're turning them into metal ions, then really what's going on in this equation is that we're removing electrons from the atoms. So the reaction ought to happen more quickly if these electrons are easy to remove. Now we've got a measure of how easy electrons are to remove. We call that the first ionization energy. All right? And we should know that the first ionization energy for these metals is falling as we go down the group. Why is it falling? We should be able to, we should be able to explain this already. So in other words, we ought to be able to predict this pattern of reactivity without really learning anything new. Remember, as we go down the group, the core charge stays the same. In spite of the fact that the nuclear charge is increasing, this means that the shielding of the inner electrons is increasing by the same amount. So the core charge is staying the same, but the distance of this electron from the nucleus is increasing all the time. So potassium is much more reactive than lithium is because it's easier to remove its electron. Okay? So the lower down this group we go, the more reactive these metals become. So in other words, the more violently, more violently they should fizz. And as you might have seen in practicals in class, potassium can easily catch fire and kind of explode on you, whereas lithium will just fairly calmly fizz around on the top of the water. Now then, alkali metals also react with halogens, and there's a general equation for this too. I would definitely recommend learning this general equation because you don't want to have to learn every possible reaction of an alkali metal with a halogen because there's quite a few different combinations. At least when we had the alkali metals reacting with water, 
there's only a few alkali metals, so there's only a few equations to learn. Here there's a number of different halogens for each of the alkali metals, so you could potentially be learning quite a lot of equations. But if we remember that the halogens always form diatomic molecules like X2, so that is to say Cl2, F2, Br2, and so on. If we remember that, then we can, and we ought to also be able to figure out that these X atoms form X minus ions in the process gaining electrons from these metal atoms which form M plus ions, then this should be an equation that we can probably figure out quite easily. Okay, Most common mistake here without doubt is forgetting that the halogens hang around in pairs, but anyway. So as I say, lots of different possible combinations, but once again, it was essentially we're swapping the M for our general metal for any alkali metal we choose, and the X for our halogen. Now, we could also decide which of the halogens is most reactive, but we're not going to use ionization energy for this. And you might wonder why, and you might be able to figure out why. Well, because halogens aren't losing electrons in these reactions. They're gaining electrons, right? So in other words, how readily this will happen for a halogen depends on how strongly it attracts electrons. Now we've got a measure of this and we call it electronegativity. And you might remember that fluorine is the most electronegative element in the whole periodic table. So electronegativity is rising up a group. Why is it rising up a group? Well, because these all have the same core charge, but fluorine has the fewest electron shells out of any of them. So basically the same effective nuclear charge is operating on the electrons in fluorine as in all the others, but over a much shorter distance. So fluorine attracts electrons the most. So fluorine is the most reactive out of these. Now, you could compare um, perhaps equation 1 with equation 2 these two reactions and decide which one's going to happen most readily. Well, lithium is less reactive than sodium and chlorine is less reactive than fluorine. So this reaction certainly ought to be slower than this one. If you were to try and compare 1 and 3, that would be a lot harder because lithium is less reactive than potassium, but bromine is less reactive than chlorine. So that would be a tough call to make which one of those two reactions would happen faster. And I suppose the lucky thing is that you'd never be able to, you'd never be asked to, uh, to make that sort of prediction and test. But you should be able to write any equation using this, this general equation here, okay, and bearing in mind what's happening to the atoms when they gain or lose electrons here. And for certain cases, you ought to be able to compare the two reactions and decide which one would happen most readily. So that's about it for that film. Um, you might think, well, that's not ma that many different types of reactions, and I suppose it's not. Um, but it is really important that you feel that you can predict what the products will be of any one of these reactions, and that you can write an equation for these reactions. And what is more, it's important that you can use some of the things that we've learned about in previous films, like ionization energy and electronegativity, to explain these patterns of reactivity. If any of that's confusing, or if you've got any kind of comments to make, then please feel free to post something on YouTube, or to come and see me and get some help with these things, because it's really quite important to be able to get these right in the test.